Royal Ascot was memorable for so many reasons this year, but the Gold Cup has to be the pinnacle. We had so many amazing horses in it, from Estimate and Brown Panther to County Court trained Miss United. We've come to speak to her trainer, Michael Winters, to find out a bit more about the mare and her plans for the future. We've come to McWinter's Yard in County Cork to meet the very gutsy race mare Miss United. I'm now joined by her wonderful owners Vanessa and Dan Hutch. I suppose Vanessa, I'm going to start with you first. I mean, this mare, she's just one in a million. You know, what does she mean to you? She's uh, a family member. She's a fantastic horse and we're really, really lucky to have her. I just want to know that Mick Winters, I mean, why did you choose him to train the mare? Um, well, I felt she was probably... Uh, a national hunt mare. She was by Golan, and Golan hadn't done very much as a, a sire at that time. He was moving. F he had moved from Coolmore to um, Grange Stud at that stage, and I broke her and rode her, and I was not in a tremendous rush rush with her. And I thought to myself, you know, let's see if she can win a bumper. I, I was always going to keep her. If she was no good as a racehorse, she was going to be kept because actually, she's anybody could ride her when she's not fit. Uh, a child could ride her, you know, she's very willing and not spooky and she marches away through the countryside that we ride through at home um, all the time and, you know, she's, uh, anybody could ride her, you could put one of those young kids up and send them away when she's not ultra fit, obviously not at the moment. <laughs> Um, so I said to Michael, I said, run her in a bumper. Uh, I don't want her finishing last. If she's that, you understand me, she doesn't show anything. And um, because I'll take her away home and I'll just use her as a riding horse. And um, first time she ran, she started at 40 or 50 to 1 and she finished second in Limerick. And the jockey's remark was that um, he'd never come into the straight with so much horse under him and still couldn't win. She didn't know enough, in other words, she wasn't quite um, reeled in enough, but from there on she learned what the game was about. When, the, when, the, when she was asked for effort, she always gave it. Vanessa, well, probably what's been your best memory with her so far? Well, I was very happy that we got to ask it, because I wanted my two sons to be there. And they were. And the, because Sebastian, who's in Australia, would come home, he said, if she won, uh, if she ran in a, a group one in the cup. And he came home. And his brother, William, who's in New York, he came home as well. So we had a fantastic um, family get together, which is very difficult when you're all living everywhere now. That was very important. Um, it was uh, going to be a tough race, and it was a tough race. But she was great. She was brilliant. Mm -hmm. well, guys, I mean, you're heading to Goodwood next week. What are your expectations for the week? We're hoping to have a very good run because she's very well and she looks very well. Uh, and, uh, yeah, we're hoping for a good run. Isn't that right? Yep. And the jockey is looking forward to us. He yes. has rang us to know how things were going. Yeah. And uh, he's going to be available. And... We just got to hope that, you know, we no like, small yes. things happen, that, yeah. you know, racing is always prone to little things happening and we just touch wood, everything keeps going forward and going well. <laughs> Mick, Miss United, she's been a fantastic mare for you. How did she come into the yard? Uh, Dan Hutch uh, they, and Vanessa, his wife, they, um, they bred it themselves and he's our local bit. And um, I suppose we were having a nice bit of success and things. And I'd say he wanted to be accessible, that he'd be able, be able to come and see her and feel happy about the training local and things and maybe support local as well. Mm -hmm. So we sat there often and she was slow to come to hand really. But she always showed enough potential that she could be a good mare and uh, she was second in the first bumper and she annihilated the field the next day in the stall and we probably took her a bit for granted, you know, but she kept surprising us and kept producing more every time she ever ran. Yeah, and I mean, her race record is so so consistent and it's amazing, really. You know, when did you think that she could do both, both the national hunt and the flat? Well, um, when they normally host if they can win a bumper and follow up in a winner's bumper, they're good enough to win a maiden and a flat, maybe. And uh, But in fairness, so she won three flat races in a short sequence. They were taking the out from one race to the next race, and she won three races within um, about three or four weeks. 
So I suppose at that stage, you'd be th having to think a bit bigger, maybe a bit more. And she had a couple of great hole runs, and then she probably scoped a bit wrong one day and fell out and ran a bit disappointing. And it meant that her mark was steady enough as well. And so she got into Galway Hall off a nice steady mark and she'd load the class. And, you know, I suppose with the confidence to think that she should win from having Rebel Fitz win in India before. And um, she actually got a very easy race and she came out very well. And she won her first list at Flash Race about four, three weeks later. So it was up, up and up with her the most, I think. Yeah, I was just going to say the Galway hurdle, I mean, that must have just been amazing. You were the first trainer, I think, to do it back to back. You know, how were you feeling about it? I, you know, I suppose the second year round, you didn't want to go the same story or the same little bit. So, like, even when you lifted up in the air, I, you'd be, I suppose you'd be rogue from training hustle and things, and you'd know the scenes and the up and down, and you'd play a little bit on the game as well. But it was fantastic, and you know, it was the afters of all these things that you really get the time and the satisfaction out of. On the day, you'd be up tight beforehand, and you'd be, when the hustle go hit these races, you're not that worried that much. But, um, I'd say we we said when Rebel Fitz would win the first time that we'd look back and things and to you know we have embraced an awful lot since and there'd be days that you get up in the morning you'd be flat and you'd say to yourself, look I better cop on. There's an awful hardship out in the world and you know Jockey's injured and you know a lot of tough scenes and a brother in law of mine, he lost his young for around the time the Rebel won his first hole so you put it all into perspective and you'd take it and enjoy every bit and try and give as much as you can to everybody else as well. Yeah, and of course, Royal Ascot this year, when was the decision made to go there? Uh, we ran in Ascot earlier and the ground was a bit fast the first day and Mia was only coming in to say she wasn't in that long and stuff and we probably decided that she wasn't maybe good enough to go back. And I suppose, in fairness to Dan and Vanessa, that was their ambition to get there as well and to run, even to run well, would they'd have been happy. So when she won the saddle big, there was no reason why you shouldn't follow it up and try and win from there. Mick, to me, she, seems, she just keeps seeming to come on every year for herself. You know, how do you keep her in such good nick? Well, um, Dan cuts a bag of grass the whole time for her and brings it up so she's nice and fresh. And, you know, we keep her on a, a low diet protein. They're a red milk clear note, 10%. And it means that they are supposed to treat for ulcers or for stress or anything else. And uh, meals, you can have a lot of tying up and stuff in meals. And maybe she might she might do fine anything else, but it means we are avoiding any problem, creating a problem. And uh, yeah, she ate the food full bush and she's out and she carrots and we give them cooking apples and if I had a battle again for myself I might give her a drop of it maybe, but in general like we give her the low grade the low protein as a gas meals because if they tie up once you can be in a spot of bottle and things like that them. But uh, in general I suppose the good ones they kind of look after themselves anyway. And when you when you were looking at the entries for the race, I mean, you had the likes of Brian Panther in there, the, the previous year's Gold Cup winner estimate. You know, yeah. what, what were your thoughts on that? Do you know, we'd be drifting in, into a race and coming out of a race and we'd be worried, preoccupied with our own horse. So I wouldn't be that fierce, well up in farm and stuff like that. So we'd be into the race and we had, you know, the one already in the episode, well, you were going to be near the mark anyway. But I wouldn't be getting too worried or digging too deep into the farm and the rest of the horses. And Jim, I mean, he gave her such a peach of a ride. Was it always the intention to kind of set her off in front? Well, ideally, if you had something else went up alongside her or something made at a fast gallop and she followed a second, it would be better again. But if, they, if we didn't make the pace, they'd have all went around the half speed and they'd all sprinted up the finish and you'd be nowhere or you'd probably inside in the middle of them. So you really had to do your own donkey work. That's why in the flat, I suppose, that the top trainers, they have their pacemakers and they can draw a horse out and they can run the race to their own timing as such, so she had to do it her own way, but she doesn't mind and she loves to have a horse on her tail and kind of just dictate him. Maybe her, we all have our weak points or whatever I'd say, if she's bundled inside and she can't get her nose out and things, she might get a bit disappointed, but she loves the battle. And um, even on the line, let's say four sides from the line, we were all saying a lovely tub, and on the line you realise, Jesus, two sides more, and we might have been up and got it, like. Definitely, I remember watching it and thinking this is what we've been waiting for all week was that battle because we hadn't got it and at the Gold Cup, I mean, you know, everybody was after the Queen's horse to do it again and, you know, there was other horses in it and of course we had the preliminaries with you where we saw you talking to Claire and everything so we were fighting her home and you must have been pleased with her run. Well, I tell you what you call it, um, I was up in the stand watching Patricia and my wife and um, I said that there must be not a round to go <laughs> because she was going too easy. 
I said, are we finishing? She said, we are. Jesus said, we might win this. And um, at the fall and pulled in, they were swallowing her a little bit. She wobbled around. She just, he, what Jim Cowley said, she looked out at the sands. So she was probably a little bit idle. So I'd say if there was something went with her and didn't pass her out, it would have been, might have been even a different result. But he gave her a great ride and, you know, he knows what that he knows. So if the mayor thumbs up 100% and right on the day and everything falls into plan, there should be nothing wanted from the jockey's quarter the next day anyway. Not that it was the last year either, like, you know. Yeah, and I mean, I suppose now the race has kind of been co- thrown into a bit of controversy with Estimate and the morphine. You know, how are you feeling about that? Because obviously it's the Queen's horse, but it kind of bumps you up. Well, what you, what you call it, it, just, it means that we get into second place instead of third. But as regards the Queen herself, she's 88 years of age and she's a great ambassador for racing and a lovely woman. And we have um, a great supporter of mine, Donny Sheen in Killarney. He's 88 years of age and he's born the exact same day as the Queen. And getting back to the race in Ascot, we had the pictures of Donny and his date of birth and all. And if we had won, that was my donation to the Queen. I was giving her a picture of a man born the same day and the same age. And uh, no, she's a great woman. You'd hate to see too much tearing and because headings and papers and stuff like that. And there's such a thin, fine line. I don't think there should be that much labelling going on. It's different, like, if there's deliberate building and hostels and stuff like that. And I think everything, the tough club and all are well on top of everything that stage now. And, um, you know, I'd say the racing is, is fairly, it's straight, really, in, in a fair way. Like, but the, um, that race, we'd be delighted to have got second place out of it, but in fairness, we wouldn't uh, wish it on anybody, like, really. And how has she come out of the race? Is she eating up and has she been doing well in her work? She came out of it very easy, but, like, I suppose, you know, travelling a lot with horses and stuff like that, you're always by your lip and hoping that the next one should be every bit as good, and it's only next Thursday she's running, and... You know, we're looking forward to it, really, and uh, she, there's no reason why she mightn't win. Like, we're getting cocky at this stage, maybe a small bit, but, you know, you come down to earth quick in the racing world as well. But um, you saw her walking there now, and she walked well, and so there's no reason why we shouldn't go off and do a good job. Yeah, so where is she heading next week, Mick? She's heading over to Goodwood for, um, what you call it, the Lily Lantry Stakes. It's a mile and six fillies. So, um, I, I, I don't know what will turn up on this. I wouldn't be studying the farm that much, but the way she's running at the moment, once again, wouldn't be rock hard. There's no reason why she might, she'll be in the money anyway, surely. And I mean, you've, I don't think you've ever been to Glorious Goodwood before. What are you expecting? <clears throat> I, I don't, well, that way, these things as they come. <laughs> and uh, Royal Ascot was lovely last time, you know, it was very well laid out and, you know, we enjoyed it. And uh, we were back home Friday morning, we were blowing the centre and the supermarket with our T-shirt on, rough and ready the following day, so we take it as it comes. I mean, you know, she is so versatile. She's not ground dependent. She's not distance dependent. She must just be the most easiest and fun horse to train. Well, and um, what you got most of the good horses. They are. They have. They have their own agendas. Like they're, they're either naturally athletic. Maybe they have loads of stamina. Maybe they're fierce sound. There's an awful lot. Well, sometimes you have a very good horse and he's very brittle. Well, there's a lot of minding then. But she's the one that. So far, she's been able to take the ups and downs of racing. And being a mayor, then, you see, they the same pressure on because if anything happens, at least, once, you know what I mean, once it's in fatal or anything, she can go away to stud and things. Whereas the gilding, every day you go out and you get an injury, well, that might be the end of their careers, like, you know. Well, Mick, I, I saw you in your finery at Royal Ascot with the top hat and the tails. Now, the, the attire for Goodwood is a Panama hat and some casual wear. Are we going to see you in a Panama hat? Well, um... Vanessa supplied me with Ascot, Royal Ascot outfit, so I'm presuming I'll be dressed again. <laughs> Brilliant. We look forward to it. Best of luck. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bye now.